Hello everybody, welcome to a Spanner's Toolbox video. Uh, today we're going to discuss how to get one of these, a MIDI controller, uh, working in your flight sim or racing sim uh, as a virtual joystick. So that's so that you can do things uh, like control your lights, uh, you know, drop your gear, raise your fuel probe, change your master arm settings, any button in the cockpit more or less you can assign to a joystick. So this will give you lots and lots and lots of buttons to play with. Uh, we'll go through the whole process of setting it up in about five steps and it should take around 15 minutes to get up and running. So let's get into it. Okay, so step one, you will need uh, three pieces of software. The first one is VJoy, uh, which is the virtual joystick software. The second one is Python. And the third one is MIDI to VJoy. Uh, now I'll, I'll share the links for all the downloads. For MIDI to VJoy, uh, you'll need to download it from GitHub. And what you want to do when you get here is just open this green code drop down, just download zip, and that should give you a, a zip archive with the, the program in it. And now let's talk a little bit about installation. So once you've got that, uh, you will have these three files. You just run the VJoy setup.exe to install that. Uh, you just run Python uh, installer to install that. And then for the MIDI to VJoy, you want to extract this to a location where you want to run it from. Uh, so you can just extract all, I'll just extract it here for the moment, and then put it wherever you want. So in my case, I'm just gonna stick it on the desktop for now. There we go. And then just to finish off this installation, you have to have Python installed before you do this. Uh, you wanna open a console here. So if you just hold shift down and right click in the folder, you can open a PowerShell window here. And then you want to run dot slash setup dot py space install. And that will download and install everything you need to run MIDI to VJoy. That's the installation sorted. So let's move on to step two. Okay, step two, you want to configure a virtual joystick. There should be a configure VJoy program installed with virtual joystick. And this is what it looks like. You can add up to 16 devices and basically you want to add as many as you need. So in my case, to do two pages of this, I just needed 64 buttons, which covers the whole grid, and eight axes. So I only actually needed one virtual joystick. Uh, and I just ticked all the axes, made sure I had 64 buttons, and we're done. Uh, but if I want to do a third page, well, I've run out of buttons. 64 is the max. So I've got to configure a second joystick. And again, I'm going to give it 64 buttons, eight axes, just to give me as much uh, freedom as I like, and hit apply. Now this will make you restart your PC. Uh, maybe twice, uh, but once it's installed, it's done. And just make sure you've got the enable VJoy button ticked as well. Okay, step three is optional. Uh, it depends a lot on your MIDI controller. But my particular MIDI controller, the Launchpad Mini Mark III, uh, comes with this Novation component software, uh, which lets you define uh, what buttons to have where. So I can drag, you know, sliders, I can put uh, CC buttons down or note buttons down. And then for each of these, I can uh, set the CC number and the channel number. So every time you do this, when you're populating your MIDI controller, you need to make sure that every control has a unique CC number and MIDI channel combination. So if I've got two things on channel one, for example, with CC number zero, let's just save that and send it to my launch pad. They do the same thing. I, don't, I think you can probably see that just about. So I'm only pushing one, but they're both working together. So you can end up with things overriding one another if you're not careful. So you just got to make sure they have a unique CC number if they're on the same channels, and then you will be fine. So if I save that, and then send that to the launch pad, now they are separate. That's the only thing you've got to watch out for, really. So you just want to configure your buttons as much as you can, give them all unique values. In my case, I can color code them and things, which can be very useful. And then, yeah, you're ready to start mapping these buttons onto your virtual joystick. Okay, so step number four, we're getting close, is to configure MIDI to VJoy. Now, this is the sort of most complicated part, but it's not that complicated. You just got to go through a couple of steps to get it sorted out. So. You want to be in the MIDI to VJoy folder inside your MIDI to VJoy uh, installation. And once again, you want to open a PowerShell window in here. So shift and right click. 
And then you want to run uh, dot slash midi to vjoy.py space dash t for test. And what this will do, there you go, it prints out the MIDI devices that it can find. Uh, in the case of the Launchpad Mini, there's actually uh, one MIDI device for the buttons around the outside edge and another MIDI device for all the buttons in the middle. Uh, so I want device two and my device three is my uh, USB audio controller. So we don't need to worry about that. So I want to use device two. So I'm going to hit two and then enter and it's now listening for signals. So now you can start pushing buttons on your device and seeing what values they produce. So this particular button is a 178 which is actually the channel number, a one, which is the CC number, and then these numbers here are the values that are being set. So zero when it's off, one, two, seven when it's on, uh, which makes perfect sense. Uh, the sliders, there we go. They, they spit out a whole bunch of numbers because they're sliding. Uh, so when it's down on zero here, uh, it's on channel 177, and it's CC number zero, which I think, matches my Novation configuration. My next one will be 177 and channel, sorry, and CC number one, I think. Yep, there it is. So same channel, same 177, but different second number. Uh, so yeah, the, you basically just go through all of these and you, you know, if you've done them sequentially, then it's a piece of cake to work out what they should be. But if you're dealing with like a keyboard or a mixing desk, you might have no idea what they are. So you just have to push the buttons and see what gets printed out on the display. And now we need to sort out our uh, MIDI to VJoy configuration file. So to configure MIDI to VJoy, first off, you want to copy the configuration file that it comes with and just rename it to whatever you want it to be called. Uh, and then you want to open this up in the text editor of your choice. Uh, I'll recommend Visual Studio Code. So this is what um, the configuration file looks like uh, out of the box. Uh, this has been configured for another MIDI device. And what you've basically got here on the left hand half, you've got your MIDI device setting. And on the right hand half, you've got your virtual joystick device setting. So you're going to be mapping the left bit to the right bit. So all you've got to do is start pushing buttons on your device and taking a look at the test output, seeing the channel number and the CC number and filling those in. So in our case here, we've got 177 and zero. And then you've got to decide which virtual joystick you want it to be assigned to. So in our case, you want it to be virtual joystick number two, uh, but it could be, you know, one to 16. And the axes you want to use. So let's just make it the X axis for now. It could be the X, the Y, the Z, the RX, the RY, the RZ, the SL0 or the SL1 in, in here. Uh, or it can just be a button number. So if we just get rid of these and fill in the rest. So that's our that's one slider done. That's one seven seven zero. Our next slider is one seven seven one. So okay, one seven seven one. Device two again. Let's assign this one to no SL zero. So that's another axis done. We've got a button here. So this button is one seven eight on CC number one. Uh, we still want this on uh, virtual joystick number two, and we'll just map it to button number one. Why not? And then I think this one, right, so this is on 159 because it's a note key. So I think that's C of the first octave. Uh, so it's 15960, so quite different, but it's still just a button off and on. And we want that to be joystick two and button number two. Obviously, you have a lot of buttons. This could take a lot of time. Uh, but when you're finished configuring all your controls, uh, just save the file. So now that you have your configuration file, uh, you just have to test it and run it for real. So first thing you want to bring up is the VJoy monitor, which looks like this. So it should have been installed with VJoy. You want to select the device that you are wanting to look at. So in our case, we've just created a bunch for VJoy device number two. And then we need to run MIDI to VJoy with this configuration. So the way you do that, that's very similar to before. Uh, MIDI to VJoy, but instead of doing a dash T, you do dash M to specify your MIDI device. In our case, it was MIDI device number two. If you've forgotten, just run dash T again, you'll see the list. Uh, so in our case, it was dash two, uh, number two, sorry. And then dash C, specify a configuration file, which for us is in the same location 
right now, and it's MIDI controller dot conf like so. Press enter, and it's running. It looks very similar to the test output. It'll start showing you the buttons you're pushing. But you may have noticed in the VJoy monitor, you can actually see it doing things. So that's our X axis. Here's our SL0 axis. There's button one. There's button two. Perfect. Now there's one final thing you might want to do here, which is to set up a little script just to run this. So instead of having to type this into PowerShell every time, you can just copy this little bit of the line, uh, make a new file in here. Let's call it um, I know MIDI.ps1 to the PowerShell script. Uh, edit this with your text editor, paste that line in and save it. And then whenever you want to run uh, MIDI to VJoy in the future, you can just run that and it's all ready to go. Uh, and of course, you can hold Control and Shift and drag that to create a uh, link, a shortcut, any way you like, and run it from there. So, you know, get your track IR set up, run this, and you're good to go. Okay, final step, step five, is just to configure the controls in your flight simulator. So for DCS, uh, just head over to the controls, pick whichever plane it is you want to configure, and uh, start assigning buttons. So you'll find that up at the top here, where it normally has your throttle and your joystick and your mouse uh, and the keyboard, uh, you will also have your VJoy devices. So you might have up to 16 of them if you've uh, created a whole bunch. And you just define it like any other joystick. Uh, so I think in my case, it's probably going to be this one. No, it's not this one. It's going to be this column. There we go. So you just have to find the right column by pushing the keys. Then you can just bind buttons just like you'd bind normal buttons. And you can assign axes uh, just like you'd assign normal axes like that. One thing to watch out for, your X, Y, and Z will get bound automatically to you know roll, pitch, and yaw. So you will want to unbind those if <laughs> you don't want to accidentally pitch into the ground uh, as soon as you push a button. But that's, I think, the only thing to look out for. There we go. Easy peasy. Now technically we're finished, uh, but I just want to talk a little bit about why you might want to do this. So this here is my uh, Launchpad Mini Mark III. It's currently £75. I think I got mine for 65 when it was on sale. Uh, and it's obviously got loads of buttons on it, so it's very capable. Uh, but there are plenty of other controllers out there you can use as well, uh, especially if you want like a keyboard, you can still use one. Uh, it's got lots of pots on it. Uh, I mean, some of these are great. I mean, look at this one. It's got uh, 24 assignable knobs <laughs> plus eight faders. You could do all of your radios, lights, etc., with this one control panel, and it's £79. Now, these aren't like super cheap, but they are a lot cheaper than the things built specifically for flight simulators. Like, if you take a look at the Thrustmaster MFD Cougar pack, okay, you get two of these like MFD looking things. Uh, but that's not that many buttons, and you've got to put something behind them, right? Uh, and if you're wanting to build anything more serious, you know, I mean, this here is like 19 buttons or something like that, essentially, and it's 70 pounds. So would you like 19 buttons for 70 pounds, or would you like, what is it, like 192 buttons for 70 pounds? I know which I'd pick. And likewise, if you wanted to buy like the real deal stuff, well, okay, you buy this because you want to build yourself a replica cockpit, but 440 Australian dollars, that's a lot of money. And it comes with a commitment as well of having to build like a, a cockpit around your desk that you bolt on and things, uh, which is you know a big deal. For me, uh, the MIDI controllers are just way more flexible, uh, a lot more portable, a lot more lightweight, uh, easier to configure for different aircraft. Uh, you know, they're not perfect. Like you, you know, it's hard necessarily to know exactly what every single button does. You've got to be clever with your color coding and grouping. But you can get a lot of mileage out of them. And uh, bang for buck, they are actually pretty decent. And the buttons generally feel pretty good too, because they're designed for people who are making music. So that's, that's why you might want to consider doing this. Even if you don't currently have a MIDI controller, uh, you know, you could buy one. And you could use it not only for making music, but also for 
you know, adding extra controls into your flight sim, just getting a bit more immersed in your game. So we'll leave it there for now. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this has been useful to at least some of you. Uh, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.